One of my favorite things to do is to find songs that I really enjoy and find cool sounds within them that I can kind of reverse engineer and recreate so I can utilize them later in my own productions. And so in this video, what I'm going to do is take five sounds that are on big billboard charting songs, and I'm going to show you how to reverse engineer those, make them from scratch. And I even provided the presets completely for free. So there will be four Serum presets and one Anna 2 preset. If you want to download those, there will be a link in the description. You can have them completely for free. But if you want to see how to recreate them from scratch, we're going to go ahead and dive into that. But before we do, my name is Austin. You're watching Make Pop Music. We have weekly videos like this every single Friday. So if you like this, please make sure that you subscribe. And if you want to check out all of our cool stuff, including free sounds, go check out our website, makepopmusic.com. We also have tons and tons of preset packs over there as well. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. The first sound that we are starting with is just from Good Luck Babe by Ch Chapel Rowan. We're going to be doing this kind of little stabby brassy scent. It's cool. All right, so to start, I have all of the MIDI already laid out. I find it really helpful to just have the chords already as I need them, but let's go ahead and let's pick the right wavetables. So for this one, I think that we need to do some kind of pulse with modulation stuff, and I'm feeling like we want to do almost like a square, but this has a little bit of a sine wave cooked in, so it's not so aggressive. Uh, and then we can turn on pulse with modulation. Let's drag that up. And then what I kind of want to do, this has like a really... Uh, stringy, scrapey sound. So I'm going to turn up the detune a little bit and turn the blend all the way up. And then I'm going to bring random all the way down. And we're going to pan this completely to one side. Now, the next thing that we're doing is kind of picking our second uh, wavetable that's just going to mirror it on the right side. So for this one, I'm actually just going to use a pulse width modulation uh, wavetable. And then we're just going to drag this up just a hair till it's about right there. Let's go ahead and turn this on five so it just matches. And I'll keep the random of this kind of right there. Let's hear this. Cool. That already feels okay. Let's go ahead and let's just create our little ramp that we want for the actual attack. So for this, I'm going to give us like maybe a 30 millisecond attack just so it has a little bit of that scrape. And then we're going to have about a 460% or 460 millisecond decay. And then other than that, that feels fine. We can go ahead and we can route this to the level. It's already kind of doing it, but I find that when you do this, it just allows you to get a little bit more specific. And then the next thing that we need to do, this is really where the sound will start coming together, is using something like a filter. So we're going to take that first envelope. We're going to route this to the cutoff. This is just on a low 18 decibel per octave filter. And then we're basically just going to scale this back until it gives us that filtered out scrapey sound. Make sure that this is hitting oscillator A and B. That's giving us that kind of scrapey, brassy, stringy analog synth sound. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of noise. So we're going to add this Juno high pass chorus. Let's turn it up just a little bit. Let's pitch it up just a little bit. And let's make sure that this filter is hitting that noise oscillator. And now the next thing we want to do is make this feel more analog. So let's go to basic. Let's make a little sine wave LFO, and we're going to drag this to these fine tune cutoffs. So I'm going to have the one on the right side at like negative nine. I'm going to have the one on the right side at about nine. And that's just going to give me a little bit of modulation with that fine tuning. We're going to turn off BPM and just have this anchored at about one hertz. That should work. And you can hear that that's already giving it a little bit of extra pizzazz. The next thing I want to do is LFO2. We're actually going to make this a little square wave. And then we're going to go to our matrix right here. And I'm going to have LFO2 basically control the amplitude. So it'll control uh, the volume. And that gives us that dun 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 dun. It has a little bit more pulse to it. We're also going to have that modulate the filter. So if I go to filter, we can go to filter cutoff. And that's kind of the basis of the sound. The next thing we can move to is actually effects. So I'm going to turn on a flanger. I feel like it has a little bit of that like metallic-y flange. Maybe a little bit of chorus. A little bit of like small reverb. So we're going to drag this way down, drag this to about 1.8, 1.9 seconds. We don't need that low end. We'll let some of the high end back in. 
And then we'll do a little bit of EQ, just some band passing right here, just to shape it up, make it feel a little bit more vintage. And honestly, that's kind of the basis of the sound. So you can take that and you can start doing things like adjusting the envelope, adjusting the cutoff, adjusting uh, basically how much the sustain. Just to really finesse the kind of final result. So here's what the preset is going to sound like when you download it. It's everything that we just did, just a little bit more finessed, a little bit more specific. And we have some uh, modulation kind of, you know, shortcuts right here. We have these little macros that you can use. So those are going to be on every preset. I feel like that one's pretty good. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the second one. Now, let's do the second sound. What I want to do for this one is the lead sound that you hear in Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter. It sounds like this. So to get started with this one, what we want to do is we want to basically just select like a sawtooth wave. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And basically, I want a little bit of frequency modulation from oscillator B. So what we're going to do to this one is just leave it on the default. We're going to turn this level all the way down. And then we're going to rise this FM a little bit. And what this does is it basically allows it to get a little grittier. Let me show you. We're also going to just make this little uh, bend right here about negative 12, because I feel like that's really all we need. And then essentially we're going to do something similar to the last one. So let's make a little sine wave right here. We're going to route this to the fine tuning. Let's turn this rate up a little bit. What I want is I want this to actually be controlled by the mod wheel. So the mod wheel is going to be the aux source. So basically as you use this mod wheel, It'll act like an analog synth in the sense of like, you can automate that modulation up. So that feels pretty good for the actual basis of the sound. There's not that much happening, if I'm honest. We can do a little bit of volume automation if we want right here, where we basically just create a little ramp up. So we'll do something like this. We'll have this on a quarter note. We can just draw this straight to the level. That'll basically act as like a little side chainer. Let's turn it to envelope. That's fine. It doesn't even have to be that aggressive. Um, that's also something you could do in like the mixing phase. But where this one really comes alive is it actually comes alive once we add some of the effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to add hyper. We're going to leave this on four and we're going to leave this right in the middle. The next thing that we're going to add is a bit of chorus. So I'm going to scale this down just a hair. Uh, everything else is probably fine. And then the last thing that we're doing, actually, there's a couple more things, but the next really big thing that we're going to do, I should say, is add a bit of distortion. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make this the diode one distortion. We're going to post EQ this, leave the EQ way back here, and then we're actually going to drive this pretty hard. The next thing that we'll do is add a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb. So I'll just do like a little... Uh, quarter note delay, that's fine. Filter out this delay just a hair. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of reverb. And that is pretty much it for the sound. So you want to make sure that you automate this little modulation up. And then essentially, once you kind of fine tune everything again, you kind of fine tune the LFOs, kind of, you know, play around with this frequency modulation, play around with some of the effects, you'll be able to download this final preset. It's basically exactly what we just created. And that's it. That's really all there is to that lead. That one's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next sound. For this one, we're making this little uh, nice bubbly little pluck that you hear in Chihiro. It sounds a little bit like this. And to make this one, it's pretty easy. All we need to do is start off with like a little sine wave. So we're going to start with the analog BD sine. We're going to take the wavetable position right to right about 12 o'clock. And we're going to do a little bit of ring modulation from oscillator B. This is just barely, barely going to do anything. 
And then the next thing that we want is we want a little basic sine wave right here, not doing anything too, too wild. We're going to turn this level all the way down and we're going to turn it up an octave. Sounds funny right now, but all you need to do is turn up that release a little bit. We're going to drag this down so we have more of kind of a ramp. So we're going to go right about five, six milliseconds. We're going to do a tiny, tiny bit of holding. And then we're going to do about a 1.7 second uh, decay. And then we'll do no sustain. Actually, we'll do a little bit of sustain. That's fine because I want it to, as you hold it, swell as we'll do later. And then release feels about like that. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to basically have a filter. So we're going to go to the low cut 24 dB filter. We're going to turn this to scale with the different keys. And then we're basically just going to finesse where this uh, cutoff sits. And that really is the basis for a lot of this sound. Other than that, there's not too, too much happening. The next thing that we can do is we can go to our effects. There is quite a bit of delay on this one. So we're going to go quarter note again. We'll filter this out just a hair. And then we're going to leave this feedback pretty high and we'll leave this mix pretty high. I might even go ping pong here. Let's go ahead and turn on some reverb. This is really where a lot of the sound comes into play. So we'll go with a smaller size with a longer decay. Cut off some of the low end cut off some of the high end, turn the spin and the spin depth up. And this is really where the sound will start taking shape. I'm going to use oscillator 2 right here, and I'm actually going to, or I'm going to use LFO 2, excuse me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to basically drive up the mix knob of this reverb, and that's going to give us that big kind of swelling reverb that you hear. We're going to go ahead and turn this to trigger. And then we're going to go ahead and EQ just a little bit, do some band passing, nothing super, super critical. Just kind of easing up on this sound a little bit. And then we can actually do something similar. So we're going to take this LFO one right here. We're going to leave this at a quarter note on trigger as well. And I'm actually going to make LFO one modulate the amplitude. So we're going to go to global. We did this on that one earlier. And then we're going to have this be unipolar. We don't want that bipolar. And that's pretty much it. Honestly, it's a pretty simple sound. Really outside of that, you'll just want to play around with this ring modulator and wherever this chorus sits. I'm going to pop in some macros and kind of show you where we land. Here is the final sound with all of the macros. So as you can see, we have some verb, some cutoff, the wavetable position. And uh, yeah, sounds like this. So the main difference for this is that now with this wavetable position automated, I actually just automated this to a square while I was playing around with it. And I think I like the sound of that better. So the final thing is going to basically be a square on oscillator B, but you can adjust that. And that's kind of the final pluck. Nothing super, super, super complicated about that one, but it's a really pretty sound that I'm probably going to use in a bunch of productions. The next sound that we're going to make is this big jumping bass from We Can't Be Friends by Ariana Grande. It sounds like this. And for this one, what we want to do is let's go ahead and get our MIDI going. Sounds a little bit like this. For this, we're going to keep this like saw wave right here. I want to take up the unison because we kind of need a big wide bass on this. And then we're actually going to use envelope two here. And this is what's going to be uh, basically our modulator for this big filter. So we're going to use the MG low 24. This is just off of a Moog filter. And we're basically going to hit this. Let's do something like this. Let's 
turn this down an octave. Let's give it a little bit of resonance and let's turn on the uh, key tracking. Let's hit a second oscillator. So for this one, I'm going to do the, in the spectral folder, there's a grimace oscillator that is just kind of gnarly. We're also going to send that envelope to, to basically just give us some modulation on this wavetable position. And let's turn this up to about eight and turn the detune right around here. Make sure that this filter is also hitting oscillator B. Turn it down an octave. That's what gives us that throaty kind of growly sound that you hear in that synth. And then that's pretty much it for the basis of the sound. The main thing that we're going to do right here is we're going to use a sub oscillator and turn this to direct out. And the reason that we're doing this is so we can get a really clean kind of low end signal. And then we're going to kind of play around in the effects. So the main thing that I want to do is EQ a little bit. I'm just going to add a nice little kind of high shelf. Let's kind of ease up on that cue just a hair. Take it just a little bit higher. And then the next thing that I want to do is actually add a high pass filter. And the reason that I'm doing this is this is going to basically filter out this A oscillator and B oscillator. So we're not having a bunch of clashing sub frequencies that will just really mess up a phase alignment. So we're going to take this right around here, turn up the drive just a hair. And uh, let's see where we want this kind of mix, probably at 100%. And that can allow the sound to be a lot bigger and a lot more aggressive. Let's try to add a little bit of compression, just see what we're thinking. And then the next thing that I would do for this is there is definitely like something like kickstart or just a little quarter note sidechain compressor on this. So it sounds like this. And then you can just play around with the filter again, kind of per usual. So I'm gonna go ahead and set some macros and show you the final sound. So here we have it. Here is a cutoff macro. This is kind of where we're finishing. Here is the funky layer macro. So we're actually just, we've got this at about two and a half. Uh, the detune, we're detuning all of it and we have that high pass filter engaged. And if you take it up an octave, and then you can filter it out even more. That kind of gives you that bass sound for that song, uh, just right in the verses. But that's pretty much it for the We Can't Be Friends bass. There will also be that preset to download. Let's do our last preset, and this is based off of the uh, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart ARP that happens specifically on the right side at the end of the song. Sounds like this. <laughs> Now, when I open up Anna 2, it actually opens with a preset. I'm just going to go ahead and hit initialize. And what I want to do is I want to select my wavetables. So before I actually do any of that, let's get this ARP working. So the reason I'm using Anna 2 for this is because the ARP on it is so good. So all you need to do is hit that little button so it's glowing. Go ahead and click it. And then I'm just going to draw in a pattern. So I'm holding four chords or four notes, I guess. I'm basically playing what I think is like a C major chord, actually. Yeah, so I'm just playing like a basic chord. And then when you turn on the ARP and you kind of let it do its thing, it'll kind of take on the pattern that you want. So I'm going to go one, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, four. Let's just uh, draw this in. And you can kind of play around. This is like where I take inspiration from a song, but don't necessarily care if it sounds exactly like it. If I were to turn that ARP off, So that's giving you kind of the basis of the sound. The next thing that we want is a Moog low pass filter. And what we're doing now is we're just adjusting that so we can get that pluck of the sound that we want with this filter. Now let's go ahead and let's just pick our sound. So I think there is a pulse width modulation saw right here that is. Pretty good. Let's use this one. It's actually a square wave. Let's turn these voices up to three. Let's leave the detune probably right around here. Turn this down an octave. 
And that square wave gives you a much bubblier sound. I think of square waves almost as like kind of like a vintage gaming console, but they have this like nice bubbly sound while still being super percussive. And I feel like that's working out really, really well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get a second oscillator on this. So let's go to that pulse width modulation saw. Or actually, let's just try, let's see. Let's try a couple of different things. Let's try a square uh, saw wave. We're going to turn this to three voices as well. Let's take this up one octave. I actually think I like this one the best, so we're going to go with saw dual. So that's pretty much all that happens with this sound. And then you can kind of just get some different uh, effects in there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a delay. So I'm just going to go to reverbs and delays. Let's go to delay, and then we'll have this dry wet dragged back a little bit. Let's go ahead and get this high pass up quite a bit. Let's turn that dry down a little or that wet. Let's go ahead and just get a little reverb on here just so it's not so dry. And that feels pretty good. And then what you can do is you can always just kind of modulate this cutoff. You could even go ahead and get something like a little modulation over here with like an LFO. And you could route this to that filter if you wanted it to open and close. I don't think it's that serious. Really, in the song, all she does is pan this out. And then we're basically just going to filter out some of the lows and make it a bit brighter. And that's basically the entire sound. And what's cool about this sound is like this actually could be used for a lot of the arps throughout the entire song, especially in that little final part. Like, let's say we wanted to go down here, right? All you need to do is hold down a lower note. Maybe we turn off the delay and plate. Maybe we hold down. Maybe we turn off, uh, you know. Like, really, once you have that ARP setting, you can kind of adjust these chords to do whatever you want. So, like, let's just say we kind of play around and do something like this. Then we would have something like this. So play around with ARPs. They're super fun. I think the one in Anna 2 is, like, my favorite to utilize. Once you kind of get everything set, this is what you'll end up with for the final preset. It sounds like this. Pan it out to the right side. And that is it. So those are the five sounds that we wanted to recreate from the charts today. If you want to download any of these presets, they are 100% for free. If you're looking for a ton of other presets, specifically for Serum and Vital, we have a couple really amazing preset packs. We have Poptopia, which is just absolutely incredible. We have Lush, which is our newest preset pack for CRM. We have Synergy, if you use Vital. Um, we have Spectrum. So there are tons and tons to choose from. They each have hundreds of presets. So go check those out if you're looking for more presets to kind of get started with. And then, yeah, go download these for free. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see us do another one of these with different sounds, let us know what sounds you want to see us recreate or kind of break down in a future video. But that is going to do it for this video. I'll see you guys soon with much more content. And until then, much love. Peace.